Conducting a t-test is very similar to conducting a z-test. We previously talked about conducting a z-test and using the four-step hypothesis process. The only difference when it comes to conducting this test and using a t-test or a test for samples with less than 30 sample points is to use a different reference table for finding critical values. Because the sample is smaller, we have to be a little bit more generous or allow for a little bit more error in our decision. Therefore, we use the critical values for the t-test instead of for the z-test if the sample size is less than 30. In order to use this table, you must first know whether you're conducting a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. Keep in mind a one-tailed test has a specific case or claim in the alternative hypothesis of less than or greater than. A two-tailed test does not have a specific case or has a not equal as the claim. The choice of tails will decide where you look for your critical value. For example, if I'm running a 5% level of significance for a one-tailed test, that lines up to the column that says level of significance for one tail, 0 0.05. For a two-tailed test, I would use the one that lines up under two-tailed test. The other piece of information you need is the degrees of freedom for your sample size. The degrees of freedom in this case is always the sample size minus one. Let's assume I'm running a one-tailed test with a sample size of 20 data points and I want my significance level to be 5%. It's a one-tailed test, or 0 0.05. 20 data points means my degrees of freedom is 19. So I'm going to scroll down to where I see 19 and find where the two intersect, 1.729. This is the critical value for a one-tailed test. Now keep in mind, this is a positive critical value. If you're running a left-tailed test, you will need to make this critical value negative, although the value will stay the same. You'll just put a negative sign in front. Lastly, if you're running a two-tailed test, maybe I'll take the same sample size and change it to a two-tailed test, keep in mind you have two critical values, one positive, one negative, both with the same numeric value. The rest of the steps in the hypothesis process remain the same. Step one, state the hypothesis. Step two, find your alpha level. The only difference is going to be what critical values you compare your test statistic to. That will be found using the t-table instead of the values given for the z-test. Everything else, decision-wise, is going to be just the same.